right. Good evening, East Africa. And for those who are watching us from across the world, thank you so much for making time for this very great and very informative program in focus. My name, as always, is Eugene Anangwe. It is a very interactive program. All you need to do, if you're on Twitter, use the hashtag InFocusRW. And I'll be able to follow that particular hashtag and read your thoughts on the focus tonight. We're talking about the issues of democracy. How do we know that there is democracy or no democracy? We'll also be putting a sharp focus on Rwanda's model of democracy. We have very great panelists, very able in this particular area. I'll be introducing them in, the, in just a very short while. Do stay with us. Thank you so much for making time on the program. Earlier on, we were a bit worried if we'll be able to make it or not. And that was caused by the opening of the skies, the rains that we have experienced. Some people have been losing power. If you're back, can you let us know? The hashtag is InFocusRW. My guest on the program today to discuss with us the issue of democracy in Rwanda and focusing on the model of democracy right here is none other than Dr. Frank Havineza, who is the leader of the Democratic Green Party, the opposition party right here in Rwanda. Thank you for joining us on the program. My pleasure. Thank you. This gentleman here, when he was last on the show, um, you asked for more of him right here, and he's right here on the program. Is none other than Lonzen Rujira. Lonzen, thank you for joining us on the program. Pleasure to be back. Some people have called this, you know, the face-off. And probably it's going to be one of the greatest programs uh, tonight. So what we're looking at today is the issue of democracy. And I'm going to start with you, um, uh, Javier, because when you were forming your party in 2009, and there was something that you said, and I'll just quote that uh, right about now, and I'm sure it will be also be put on the screen in just a bit so that those who are able to uh, see that can be able to read that. You said, and I quote, we want to bring an opposition party not just for the sake of opposing, but as an alternative to the ruling party, which was the RPF. And you said that the objective of RPF before taking over was to bring democracy, social justice. But when they got to power, they concentrated more on having political power. Quote, unquote. This was during an interview that you did uh, some time ago. Today, if you look back, you know, counting from 2009 to 2017 concerning issues of democracy based on this quote here. Do you still hold the same thought? Uh -huh. Okay. Thank you very much, first of all, for uh, the invitation to this program. Uh, of course, the reasons that, that led us to start the party are still valid. Because uh, we started the party when we saw there was a lack in the country of... Uh, participatory democracy. We saw uh, there was a lack of, uh, in the constitution we say we have consensus democracy, uh, but we saw that uh, what is written and what is in practice, uh, the two are not going together properly. Right. We need more consensus <laughs> democracy than what is written. So what is written to be put into practice. Uh, we saw, uh, they were talking about power sharing in the constitution, but when we see what, was, uh, what is in the reality, we saw more of LIPF giving, uh, sharing power with those they want, but not really in the way we thought there would be real power sharing. In the program, we'll definitely delve deeper into the issue of power sharing, but I'm, I'm just still pushing you a bit harder on this one, especially on what you say that you're offering alternative. Yeah. And you created the Green Party to offer alternative, not yes. just to oppose for the sake of opposing. Yeah. Sticking to the subject matter of today, which is uh, democracy. What alternative are you offering? Of course, when it comes to issues of democracy that you claimed in 2009 mm. when mm. you were forming your party mm. was missing in Rwanda. Yeah, of course, uh, the first of all was the wider opening of political space. Because by the time uh, we were starting uh, this party, uh, there was very close uh, or very little space that was available uh, for people to discuss ideas, uh, even for the media. I was in the media at the time, uh, if you could remember. I was an in independent media in the uh, Rwanda news line in Museso. Uh, there was very little space for us at that time because most of our journalists were harassed or others wanted to go to exile and newspapers were closed. So basically, we were seeing 
They, we had problems to express ourselves in the media. In the civil society, there were also challenges, people in the civil society, to uh, properly exercise their right of uh, critiquing the government, criticizing the government, or uh, showing what is not going right. People were always scared mm. in the civil society to air out their views. So I was actually also in the civil society, so I was experiencing that. We saw uh, in the uh, public sphere, people were always speaking uh, behind the doors. They don't want to show what is on their heart. So we saw all that. So we started this party to say that we can take away that thing. Where that, that anyone was eight years ago. That was eight years ago. If, if, you, if you look today, mm. you know, eight years later, mm. do you still think things are still the same? No, there is some, some opening. There is some opening. Let yeah. me bring in Lonzen here. Lonzen, you've been listening to him, <laughs> still sticking to the issue of alternative, you know, to what is already there. You know, what, what, what would you definitely say concerning that? Um, I think that, uh, first of all, um, I think that, uh, generally speaking, there is uh, a, a failure of imagination. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that in the, op in the opposition, the, the issue has not been necessarily absence of space. It's about the poverty of imagination. And I'm going to give you the context for it. Uh, the Constitution, uh, two articles of the Constitution in particular here, uh, if you're going to talk about democracy in Rwanda, uh, Article 62 on power sharing mm -hmm. and uh, Article 10 on the fundamental principles talks about uh, a s system of governance, a democracy that is um, shares power, political power. And political power, the, de the decisions that come from it are done through a consensual model, the, the, through consensus. That's the expression of the, uh, the participants in the democratic dispensation. Uh, now, the, the model, when we talk about the model, the democratic model, when does it become a model? Because power sharing, there are many uh, examples of power sharing yes. uh, across the world. When does it become a model? It becomes a model when it has peculiarities so what peculiarities do we have? The uniqueness. Yes, the mm. uniqueness is the fact that this was an organically grown political uh, system. Mm -hmm. It came out of the challenges, uh, the realities of a post-genocide society, and it, was, uh, it, was, it came out of the discussions of Uruguiro, 1990, 90, late 1998, 1999, towards 2000. So the decision was made that the form of politics that pro was practiced before genocide played the part in creating uh, an environment where genocide is possible and that was the competitive uh, winner-take-all system. Mm. So they introduced from the Uruguero um, debates, debates mm -hmm. uh, a, 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 there was agreement, general agreement that we need a new form of a political dispensation that brings everyone on the table, that is participatory, that uh, the result, the decision of which uh, consensual in nature so that we get away from the confrontational nat uh, nature of politics so that we don't return into the, the course of the past. So now, when he talks about uh, the absence of participation, I wonder what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He doesn't get it clearly. Yeah. The absence of participation. And also as you answered that, it would be important to paint it in black and white. What was the con con contribution? Because you, you mentioned that the, the, there's improvement comparing from 2009 to today in terms of democracy and the democratic democratic space in rwanda today what has been your contribution as the position that is supposed to offer alternative what have I think you before we go to the yes. contribution yes i think uh, he says that he needs to know what is really missing in the participation mm -hmm. so i think uh, as much as i agree uh, that uh, uh, pre-genocide we had confrontational uh, politics where parties uh, were confronting each other, confronting each other, and uh, that caused a bad atmosphere, which led to the genocide. And we don't want to have uh, that kind of confrontation. That one is a uh, fundamental values of the constitution. I don't uh, uh, disagree. I agree with that. Mm -hmm. However, I said as we opted to have uh, consensus democracy, we needed to have consensus democracy in real practice, but not in the paper. Do you feel Why? It's, it's, it's just in paper? I think that uh, uh, it, it's not. It has not been exploited to full or to its uh, uh, to real maturity stage, because we see that uh, as much as we need to call people to discuss and to participate in decision making, you find that the ruling party uh, still has a bigger say uh, in all the decision making. 
uh, processes. So you find that uh, even those parties that were uh, there before the genocide, like the PL and PSD and the other parties, uh, uh, even though they are there, but you find that there is a big uh, uh, space which is uh, taken by the RPF, uh, the ruling party, and I think uh, it could also be because of uh, the role of RPF in stopping the genocide, because uh, I mean, RPF did not come to power by votes. I mean, it came to power uh, through uh, military means when it stopped the genocide. So because of uh, that higher level uh, it had, or it still enjoys, uh, I think it makes some people feel uh, uh, maybe incapable of, uh, of, uh, of criticizing it uh, in full, even though they are working together. So you find that most of the ideas you hear more, they are from the LRPF. You don't hear these parties coming out uh, in public to hear their views. Is so that that's still a challenge. Uh, when it comes to, you know, political parties like his probably not having that loud voice in terms of decision making or proposal of because your your party is in the political forum political parties forum but we are not yet in parliament i mean those parties are saying that uh, the rpf and its coalition but uh, uh, other than that is pl and uh, liberal party that is and uh, psd social democratic party mm -hmm. who are in parliament as parties uh, when we hear most of the outcomes of the parliament, or most of the ideas that come out of that, you hear that actually LRPF wants to own up everything. Even the normal government programs, like let's say, uh, giving car, one, cow to, one cow per family, you don't hear, the LRPF owns it. Really? It doesn't want to say it's a government which has done it. Whereas the government is not a government of LRPF, it's a government of, uh, they used to call it a government of national unity. Let me hear from And the government of uh, everyone. But now you hear one cow per family is LRPF. Hear from, you hear this hear program is LRPF. Like LRPF because is the at, one at the end taking of the over day, everything. You <laughs> want RPF to give you permission to go and give out cows. No, no, I mean. This, you want to like ask for permission to be told what to do. <laughs> These are programs which are funded by the state. I mean, state and, budget. Uh, let, let me hear from London. But they are yes. not taken by the RPF. Uh, so that's a challenge. <laughs> Dr. Yeah. Agneza wants RPF to give members of parliament to yeah. go to parliament. Mm -hmm. He doesn't know he needs to go to the population mm -hmm. to get members to of parliament. No, 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 that's not <laughs> what I'm <he> saying. <laughs> so he's complaining that they don't have members of parliament. He doesn't know where they come from. Mm -hmm. No, no, Members no, of parliament uh, came from the people. Yes. So RPF is not going to give you members of parliament. Now, I uh, think you, you no, are no, putting no, no, let, the let wrong yeah, 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 Now, here's the thing. That's not what I said. Here's what the RPF does that the opposition lacks. The RPF has conviction. And the reason has conviction, two reasons. One is historical, and uh, another one is uh, practical. Now, this historical aspect is that the RPF has been in place maybe uh, almost 30 years now. Huh? I think 30th anniversary is coming very soon. Um, his party has been in place since, we said, 2007. Nine, nine or so, yeah. Yes. So this is just maybe uh, seven, eight years or so. Yeah, uh, this is a young party, you know, it is the conversation between Green Party and RPF, it's a conversation between a mature person and a child and an infant. Mm. So they cannot have a, a, a normal conversation in terms of exchanging <laughs> ideas. Do you think, do you think no, that that's is very wrong? I mean, uh, why? that's a very... Why do you think that is wrong? Yes. <laughs> but I have a point to finish. <laughs> why, why? I'm going to come back to you. Let me, let me first hear his thoughts on this. <laughs> yes, I want you to react on what Lonsen has said. Can you said. react no, after I finish mean, my point? Yes, yes. I have a point to finish. You start from another point. Because yeah. that no, one no, is a poor comparison no, no. I'm comparing. Yeah, I'm comparing maturity in terms of age. I said, Arab has conviction due to maturity of age, 30 years old, and his party eight years. Eight, is eight years old. So it's a conversation. Imagine a 30 year old person having a conversation with an eight, eight year old person. No, that conversation is going at best to be unintelligible. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what's going on. Now, let me, t in terms of conviction, um, that is one is historical, yeah. the second is uh, the practical. Uh, deliverables, the fact that RPF has Before you go overseen, that, sorry, no, no, let, let RPF, then you yeah. RPF yeah. has overseen, mm. apart from the, the, the moral credit of mm. stopping a genocide, the RPF has overseen a, an accountable government. Mm -hmm. Now, the RPF has conviction and the ability for RPF to hold uh, that voice that he is so uh, against, that he, it's overwhelming, it is out of that accountability. And the moment that the RPF will uh, lose control of an accountable system of governance, it will begin to crack 
And it's from that cracking that the opposition parties will begin to, 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 to push their agenda. As long as the RPF is unaccountable, uh, go uh, government, it's leading an accountable government, as long as the RPF conducts, continues to conduct itself in such a way that it is, it is accountable to the public, mm -hmm. the RPF, the, this system, the historical moments in which it has been weakest, has been the moments in which accountability issues have come in, in, in play. Um, that is why RPF is very strong in pushing against accountability because it knows it is it will crumble the moment it loses the that, accountability, that, that accountability. Mm. Uh, You wanted to argue, but... Yeah, but, but I mean, wanted to out. say that uh, uh, it's very important that he doesn't compare uh, political parties in terms of age, mm -hmm. because uh, for a political party, we compare them in terms of ideas. A party, any party which has an ideology, which has ideas, you compare those ideas. That's what we, we don't, don't discuss uh, how long, uh, tall someone is, or how handsome, or how beautiful, or how old or how young, we discuss about ideas. Yes, so but talking about those ideas, about ideas, this is your about chance. Ideas of RPF, Dr. Frank. Not about to maturity and age or what. Yes. So that's what I wanted to say first. Yes. About accountability yes. issues. Yes. Of course, there are, there are problems of accountability within the RPF. We have had problems with mayors who are corrupt, who are being arrested all, every time, the executive secretaries, even in some ministers who have been put, taken to prison, even in some permanent secretaries. Yeah, we've seen all these uh, issues of accountability, or, so you cannot say that uh, so we are not, RPF we, is we a are, clean, we are, uh, we are in agreement. that there is no uh, so we are issues of accountability, is so they are always there. Yes. And we are, still yes. even up to now, they are there. I think yeah. I even I had last week there were some cases. Why do you say you, Me you are, in are, we are We are in agreement. I'm saying RPF is accountable, and he's saying that the RPF is arresting corrupt mayors. There's no contradiction. Mm -hmm. We are saying that it's the same argument. Mm -hmm. He's actually reinforcing my position. Uh, but those are RPF members, or RPF senior cadres who are corrupt. That's what, but accountability is what I'm talking about. Yeah. I'm saying that RPF holds the moral authority. The, the reason that you opposition parties, including yours, lack conviction is because you are going after a political party that has conviction, and that conviction is underpinned by accountability. And you are saying that uh, RPF arrests mayors and other office holders who are caught being corrupt, which is in line with my argument. And my argument is that the moment RP RPF will lose the button corruption, you will start to gain the... Right. the mm. Yeah, but I think let, they let should me, first me, make sure that the people they put in power mm. or the people who hold the offices or public offices should not be corrupt in the first place. Right. So what, what, what the moment saying, that RPF what is promotes, saying, what is, promotes corrupt people... No, no, no. What he's saying, promoting, money, promoting... There is already what he's saying, mm. saying is they're not promoting and they're not encouraging it by arresting the ones that you're saying. That is why he says you're actually in agreement on that. But let's let's. But some people have been arrested by, they, I mean, they have been investigated by the Office of uh, Auditor General. And they have been and found guilty and they're not being called. And they're not being called. Like Even who? the parliament let's, let's has made some recommendations. Yeah. Yes? Like who? Yeah. Uh, like, let's not go into those details. But you read the Auditor General's report. You uh -huh. find a lot of cases uh -huh. of people who have been uh, condemned, people have been, uh, I mean, I mean they, are, they have been called to be uh, uh, investigated mm -hmm. and nothing happens. And what do you do as opposition that offers alternative? We, we, we are not yet in a position mm -hmm. to, uh, to, to do more because we are, we don't, we are not yet having the, any political power yet to, to take it forward. But of course we'll work more uh, with the Auditor General's office to make sure that those people are brought to justice. You will work more or you are when already we, working more? Yes, because we are not yet in power. Mm -hmm. it, we, they are, the political power in power is RPF and its uh, coalition. Do, do they need to be in power to be able to put the government in check? No, that's them? just just that's an excuse. <laughs> no, it's not an excuse. I mean, we can <laughs> yes. make statements. Yes. We can make statements. Yes. We can make press releases about it, mm -hmm. but we can't take it further unless uh, yeah. maybe we can we can say we can take, but we cannot. I mean, take those people to court because they're officers, government officers, which should take those matters forward. But if when the time we are in power, we we'll work more with the office of Auditor uh, General and the other authorities like Kumdusman to make sure that those people are brought to justice. London. Yeah, I, th I think uh, what is needed here is um, uh, uh, Dr. Havineza is saying that uh, the RPF is an accountable mm -hmm. system mm -hmm. of governance mm -hmm. because it, it holds anyone who goes outside the ethical parameters accountable. accountable. Uh, we are in agreement, so there's no need to bitter about that point. Mm -hmm. we, sh we should move on to the next point. Mm -hmm. um, I was talking about the issue of uh, conviction. Um, the, the political system, the, 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 the democracy, the kind of democracy that we have in this country, uh, the consensus model, uh, you find that, uh, that uh, um, the, the opposition has been very wise in one way. 
in that it understands the context through which the political, uh, the, the democratic model was birthed and it is uh, supportive of that. Uh, so therefore it's no, it is not uh, out there to, 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 to take power, but is there to take part. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you why that is important and wise. Uh, the RPF is similarly wise to, to, to allow this system, uh, democratic system, to, 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 to continue to exist in the form that is existing. The consensus democracy. Yes, yes. Mm. RPF is similarly wise because the RPF, given the weakness of the political position, the RPF could open up floodgates and say that the consensual model uh, should uh, cease to exist. Let us go for competitive. They will sweep everything. Yeah, the opposition will not have a chance. Yeah, so the RPF is wi equally wise to allow room for a consensual model where the alternative voice can come in. The fact that the alternative voices have been uh, overwhelmed by the RPF is a result of conviction, but there's wisdom on both sides, the RPF and the political position. Now, the dangers to our democratic model are organizations like uh, Dr. Havineza's uh, organization, Green Party, mm -hmm. because they want to ruin, to tear asunder a political system. And when I talk about political system, I'm talking about the RPF and those in coalition. Mm. So I'm not just talking about the RPF. RPF only, so yeah. we have a system that is delivering for Rwandans that is accountable. You have an elite consensus and you have the ability to deliver. Very rarely will you find a political system where you have those two things. You may have the elite consensus in places like Uganda, Kenya, but it is unaccountable. Therefore, it, it, it is not working in the interests of the people. The combination of elite consensus, which is, ensures that the, the, the absence of civil, civil strive and that comes from competitive uh, politics, and the combination of that and accountability, accountability is why this system has been successful yeah. and why it will stay so. Right. The, 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 the merits that, of uh, consensus. Let's first look at that. Yeah. Would you, would, you, would you feel comfortable? Because he says, even if we went for competitive, no, he I would see that he, uh, his uh, interpretation is misled. Mm -hmm. Because he can say that we want to tear us under, uh, like to destroy. Mm -hmm. No, we, we have no aim of destroying. Mm -hmm. Uh, anything. Mm -hmm. uh, our aim is to make Rwanda better, to make Rwanda more beautiful yes. than it was. Yes. This is our objective, to make Rwanda more democratic. We started this party to give alternative yes. uh, policies yes. to what was going on or mm -hmm. to what is going on, which mm -hmm. we see that is not right. So by doing that, of course, we have to accept competitive politics because the constitution of Rwanda says that Rwanda we are ruled under a multi-party system. Yes. Yes, we are a presidential system, we have a parliament, but it's also a multi-party system, mm -hmm. which means that political parties, they have to go to elections, have to compete for votes, and have to get into to power or to parliament or to presidency. Mm -hmm. So this is what we believe in, it's in the constitution. So if we are going to what the constitution says, it doesn't mean that we want to destroy what we have. Consensus means that some issues of national importance have to be agreed upon by all the people, all the political class, they have to agree. That one will have no problem. Issues of unity and reconciliation, we all agree that Rwanda, we have to have unity and reconciliation, we don't have to have genocide again. Yeah. Issues we agree, issues of national security, we agree that Rwanda, we should be secure. And our party, we have also policies of securing this country. And there are issues better that you than don't the RPF is doing. And there are issues that you don't agree on. Of course, that, right. that's normal. So when we have that kind of uh, stand, it doesn't mean that we want to destroy or to tear asunder. So, I think, uh, uh, Mr. Ronze. Dr. Abineza is understanding tearing in, uh, in a narrow Literal sense. Literal way. In a narrow sense. The sense <laughs> in which I'm talking about is uh, we have an organic democratic system. Mm -hmm. And any time you have alien matter, Entering into it, you are tearing. Right. Thank you for yes. that. We're gonna we're gonna take a very short break. I think we're in class right about now. Of course, we definitely are picking your tweets. Also, keep them coming. The hashtag is very simple: in focus RW. And of course, I'd love to see if we have any feedback, any tweets out there. You could be able to put them on the screen. I'd be happy to read them. We have Nelson there who says opposition please ask him what he opposes i think this is for you uh dr Havineza. there any other one uh let's put put them also right there on the screen if we have any other tweets uh we have one from princess from north and that says dear frank the people of rwanda opted for pk and asked an amendment of the constitution how are you going to change their minds this is i think on the role of the opposition if we have any other tweets let's also look at them and then we'll be able to uh respond to them uh we have 
utumwi shima. Every country shapes its democratic path based on history and aspirations of the people. If past ignored, future gets uncertain. Thank you so much for that. We still have more right here also on Twitter. Uh, one from Martin Goga, which says the constitution sets power sharing formula but does not eliminate competition to fit in. Mm -hmm. Another one right here from um, Jules says, M uh, Mr. Havineza, RPF is stronger than you. Think if you want to criticize, look back where Rwanda is from and where we are now, then you you will criticize. We'll be able to take more of this feedback when we come back. Do stay with us. This is In Focus. Now that is the smell of a new day, new business ideas, new opportunities, and above all, a new chance to start over. Forget about the news. We want to talk about the stocks that are trading, what companies have been listed, and the exchange rate and also the money matters, not just regionally, but also globally. Take a look. They are the right arm of every business world. The small scale businesses, they contribute a lot to our economies and yet they face new challenges every single day. Now I come in to stop all that, listen to them, find a common ground and come up with a solution. And I also give you an insight into the opportunities in their business world. Join us every Tuesday on Business Digest. Right, thank you so much for still being with us. This is In Focus. My name as always is Eugene Anangwe. The hashtag on Twitter is In Focus RW. And I'm definitely reading those uh, feedback or those tweets right here on uh, uh, my uh, Twitter handle right here. Thank you so much for keeping them coming. <laughs> but our friend is losing composure. This is Vamurangi. Thank you so much for that. Another one here uh, from Kabanda says, uh, the Green Party needs MPs in Parliament before standing for anything else in Rwanda's model of democracy. Let's pick, pick up from there. Then we can uh, go into uh, the topic even more uh, deeper. It's, it's a question concerning you saying you do not have parliamentarians in Parliament and that is why you cannot, you know, be able to do much. Yeah. Mm. I, I mean, uh, uh, as you understand, our party was registered uh, officially uh, in uh, August uh, 2013. I mean, that was uh, two days before the deadline to submit uh, candidates for the parliamentary elections. So it was not possible for us to participate in the last parliamentary elections. Uh, so we wanted, of course, so much to, to be in parliament, but we, we were registered on the 11th hour, so it was not possible. That will not stop us, of course, from participating in parliamentary elections next year, we will. But as a party, we decided to first go for the lion's share. We are going for the presidency. Mm -hmm. Parliament will come later. Mm -hmm. So we agreed as a party, we are going to compete for the presidency this August. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Okay. So, sir, okay. you want to say something on that before yeah, we jump yeah, into yeah. the next yeah, I think, uh, item? Uh, one of the weaknesses in our uh, democratic model was... Uh, uh, the failure to conclude um, the, the logical thought of 
of uh, the, 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 the parameters in which our democratic model was born. And that would have been to take away the presidential elections from the population, from the people into the uh, member of parliament. This has, should have been a parliamentary model mm. in such a way that Frank would have been forced to look for MPs mm -hmm. if Before he wanted he can... to become president. Mm. Yes, mm. he doesn't have MPs yet he wants to be president. That is an error in our democratic model. Now, um, in terms of lack of conviction, mm. Because these are parties... Oh, no, how is it an, an error? These, oh, wait, how wait, is it yes. an error? Maybe. Because, 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 <laughs> in one line. Because, because, because I want us to jump onto another item. Yeah. No, it is an error because uh, Frank does not see, uh, Dr. Avineza, has not, does not see the importance of having members of parliament to push an agenda. But he wants to run for president. And I'm saying that had our democratic model uh, taken the thought to its conclusion, it would have made the political system here mm -hmm. a parliamentary system instead of a presidential. Yeah, now, but there is uh, no contradiction to that, the, Mr. The, the, mm -hmm. the, 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 the lack of conviction, how it manifests itself. I said uh, political parties, opposition parties ha lack conviction. One, I said because uh, young ones like his. Second, there are his, uh, others that are older, but the, 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 the history during the gen pre-genocide time, eh? the, 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 the period uh, around which they were born and the, the times they went through, they, they, they uh, left them hobbling somehow and uh, they, 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 uh, there's a lack of confidence somehow taking place. And, and then they now, the lack of conviction now has to do with the fact that there is no ideological basis for these parties. Ideological the, uh, yes, basis. The let's, RPF let's, is very clear about yes. its ideology. Yes. These parties don't have ideological basis. Yes. It is difficult to woo voters when you don't have conviction and that conviction is you articulate that conviction through, uh, through an ideology uh, that, that um, now uh, in terms and of... And I think, Lonzen, before you mm. go on, I think that is where that question of opposition, opposing who? Mm. And, and, or opposing what? And I think that is where Lonzen comes in on the issue of ideology, you know, in terms of what do you stand for? What alternative are you putting on the table? In other countries, we have the opposition parties having shadow ministers. You know, mm. when the government of the day announces the budget they come up with an alternative. If you were in power, yeah. this is how the budget would have looked like. Yeah. Do you have that, those kind of things? I mean, things? that comes, do I you think, do with them? the... Uh, what uh, do you need to do them? When the opposition parties are in parliament, uh, and they have a uh, leader of opposition, I think Rwanda is now, uh, not, I think, Rwanda is now a member of Commonwealth, and uh, most of the Commonwealth countries have that kind of model where the oppositions in parliament, they even have a leader of opposition, then they can have the shadow cabinet. So we have not reached there yet in Rwanda because of this uh, consensus model which is there, where you find that the parties in the parliament, uh, they tend to be like, kind of, we don't have uh, backbenchers, or uh, you, you see, they all sit together, whether they are uh, the PSD or PER or RPF coalition, they all sit together, not like you see uh, in other uh, so what countries. you're saying is, so is let me, without let me go that you'd never issue. be able to give alternative. No, but we are going to get to that, I you, think. Yes. Uh, Once we are in Parliament, we're going to see how we can uh, make these things better. But uh, I want to talk parliament. about the issue of ideology, because yes. this is a, a very big issue, he has said. I think uh, uh, most of the parties, let me say at least three parties uh, that I, I can talk about. Our party, the Democratic Party of Rwanda, we have an ideology. And it's also not just a local ideology. What's your ideology? The green ideology is an international ideology. Mm -hmm. And it comes from the environmentalism ideology. And it's a sister to the social uh, democratic ideology. Because originally, the green, uh, the environmentalism, mm -hmm. uh, most of those people were part of the socialism ideology. Mm -hmm. But when they saw that we also could take care of the people, but we need to also take care of the environment, yeah. So then they had uh, their cousins, they had to, to move on. But people so feel like they the don't hear your voice the, the when, when issues are here of, in Rwanda. of environment so, are talked about. Uh, please, just yes. give me one second. Yes. I believe, in terms of ideology, that yes. the social democrats, they're part of an international ideology. And also the liberals, they are also part of an international, they also have liberals international, and mm. the social democrats, and the greens international. Yes. I think we are three parties here who have international ideology. But RIPF does not have any international ideology. It is an, an amalgamation mm. of different ideas together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's why they call themselves a family, not even a party, because they have I'm, everything okay. yeah. together. I'm, I'm, so it's like a, RPF is a movement, yeah. you know. Long so it's that. not movement, a... Uh, ideology, yeah. you mentioned the issue so of ideology. Now when you talk, so you don't say, you don't talk so about issues of ideology, yeah. because yeah. all parties have yeah. ideology, even 
those others have not mentioned, mm. they have their own what? But, something mm. they believe in. And you feel like the RPF has none, it's just a movement? No, yes, RPF is amalgamation right. of everything. Okay. <laughs> yeah. and, and that's wrong? Eh? And that's it's, wrong. No, it's not wrong. It's a movement. They have everything together. You mm. find that they have social issues, they have uh, liberal issues, they have uh, even some environmental issues, they have everything together. So, they, we have... We, we, we have an international ideology where we, which we can champion and also bring in all other things to make the country better. So, in this case... Which you say you cannot be able to do now until you get to power. Parliament. Not parliament. Uh. We said we get political power. We cannot uh. achieve anything. We don't have political power. So, political power is not only parliament, but it's first of all, it's having the presidency. Okay. Don't and I, and <laughs> um, Dr. Avinez, the thing is that I wish I was debating against him. Mm. But we're on the same side on many things. <laughs> and he's actually arguing my points. Mm. And he's arguing that I told him that his parties like his are a threat to our democracy. And he agrees. Let me tell you how he agrees. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I said that the democratic model we have here is an organic model that came to respond to peculiarities we have mm. and responds to random peculiarities. Mm. And he's saying that his party is an internationally, ideologically grounded party, mm. which means he's here to tear asunder our democratic system. Mm -hmm. He agrees with me. Mm -hmm. He's a threat to our democracy. Mm -hmm. In fact, um, if he's saying that he had had troubles registering his party, I think they were right to not register him. In fact, I don't know why they did. Because he's a threat to our democracy. <laughs> why? I just told you. Because we have an organic democratic model that responds to random problems mm -hmm. and, and aspirations. He's responding to international aspirations. We still haven't solved our problems. Mm -hmm. And he's, he has an ideology that is green. <laughs> no, but it's listen, also, I was so saying look, that at least no, three no, parties okay, in okay, Rwanda. Okay, let, me, let me tell you, let me no, tell you the, the, the consequences. No, let me tell you the consequences. The, yeah, yeah. Social of, Democrats. Uh, the consequences of this, this uh, what I... What Just I, one consequence. No, listen, one jump. consequence yes. of, of this thing about a poverty of imagination. Uh, one consequence is that uh, as a result, the policies they have, now they are talking about uh, building a wall bet on, between Congo and the Uganda. That would be a topic for another day. The, I don't want us to yeah, no, I'm, right I'm, I'm telling you the expression yes. of the absence of imagination, mm -hmm. how it expresses itself. Mm -hmm. One is a wall. Another one, he said that he wants to, uh, the 500 note Rwandan franc to be written on French. And another proposal. So when you look at, at, at the, the combination of policies, the alternatives they're trying to pr bring yes. against the RPF. I'm not a spokesperson for the RPF, yes. but I'm just I'm here to correct yes. uh, any uh, misinformation yes. and distortions in terms of the Rwandan democratic dispensation. And I'm here to defend the Rwandan national interest. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying that external. Um, external ideas that come into the Rwandan uh, democratic model. It's not a one-size-fits-all. That are alien, all. yes. that are alien yes. to, the to the Rwandan model, that don't come to respond to the challenges of it's Rwandans. A threat, of a threat of Rwandans and a threat to the democratic model. No, let's uh, let's expand this conversation, this conversation more. To him uh, because uh, Dr. Franks, yes, let, let's expand this conversation a bit more um, and move on to some other elements of the Rwandan model of democracy. And, and, and one of that is, is, is on the issue of power sharing. And, and it's something that, uh, you would know, you other... Want, would sorry? you want me not to say one thing? On no, 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 you says? can do that. You mm. can do that. But what I'm just trying to say is I want us to also move this conversation yeah, forward sure. and look at other areas mm. uh, of the model and look at the merits and the demerits. Some people have said that, you know, the, the, the model of democracy of Rwanda is one that probably needs to be picked up, you know, by other regional countries, for example, where winner does not take it all. As we've seen in other countries where if a president has, well, has won and the party has won, they take everything. But here we have, you know, where the speaker is not supposed to be from the same political organization as the president. What is wrong with that? No, that is marvelous. Mm -hmm. and what we, as I say, we agree on the fundamental mm -hmm. principles of the constitution. Mm -hmm. That's marvelous. What mm. we don't agree is that some things, very good things are written and they're not practiced. But that is practice and it's written. Yeah, no, yeah. So I said that one is marvelous. Uh -huh. Yeah, so we agree that the president of the republic should not be, his position should be the same holding 
uh, the speakership of the parliament or of the senate. That is something very. But you said here. in your quote when you were standing yeah, your party so, that you you feel like the RPF yeah. has, is now working so hard to just amass political power, and yet you're saying that yeah, that article because we know that you look at the mayors, good, look at the mayors in the districts for, of for, Rwanda for, for, for because sharing. power is not just parliament mm -hmm. and the presidents. Mm -hmm. It's also about local government. Mm -hmm. Look, we have thirty districts in Rwanda. You tell me which other parties have uh, uh, someone who is a mayor from those parties. Maybe let me say. I, I don't know very well, let me say, but at least what I, the information I have, not more than uh, 28, at least 28 districts, they all, all, they are all belonging to RPF. I mean, the, the mayors are also chairman of RPF in those districts. So meaning that RPF uh, is not just controlling the parliament or the presidency, but also all the districts. You go down, look at the uh, sectors, and the uh, uh, local levels in the uh, Midugudu, uh, Mirenje, uh, to, uh, whatever, Tugari, everywhere you find that. <laughs> so now this, one, this issue is very issue of uh, paramount uh, importance because mm. we have even taken this I issue in our petition to parliament that mm. this issue should be resolved whereby those who are heading public offices should not be also heading political parties in those areas. Right. Uh, we haven't took it to the, uh, when in parliament we didn't succeed, we took it to, uh, to the prime minister's office to the government to see that they can be changed. And unfortunately, we have not changed it. So right. but we're going to take it to the next level. Right. So basically, <laughs> this issue shows that RPF is uh, not just controlling the presidency, or if there is some sharing in, uh, in parliament, but you look in the local areas, they have everything. So we would wish that those local elections, if, if the law says that parties are not supposed to campaign, it should really reflect the out, final outcome. But if the final outcome shows that the parties are heading, yet they never campaign, so if you then want, it is, let's say, let's, is, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's have a, a scenario where you win the presidency. I you know, I'm saying let's have a scenario yeah. where you you win because already I've seen that you're already the presidential candidate for yes. the Democrat Green Party. Yes. What would you or what would your party want to change on that end? That's how would you change? We're going to change without to make going sure. to the people on the ground yeah. who the constitution actually. Respect <laughs> people them. can belong to different parties. Do you think you'll be able to make it? Yes, of that? course, because if we're a democratic country, yes. if, if, if whatever, if the people they choose to be in liberal party or social democrats or green or whatever party or RPF, it's okay. But what means that we have a proper program for the country which is managing the country and people are free to give their ideas or to belong to any party. So this is something we are going to work this towards is, too. Uh, this is and what, this is something uh, we're going to promote. All right, let me hear from uh, you. Yeah, uh, first of first. Um, the reason uh, the petition in parliament did not pass, that doc the petition Dr. Avineza took to parliament, the reason it was not considered is because he doesn't have MPs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so he needs to start uh, finding ways to have MPs instead of being busy running for president. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Second, mm -hmm. um, the, the, there is room um, if uh, Dr. Avineza the, starts to think about uh, an organic, yes. organic ideology that responds to aspirations of Rwandans mm -hmm. and, con and starts to go in those places that he's talking about yes. uh, on, on the grassroots to mobilize people to become members of the Green Party, but they will only, he will only succeed to the extent to which he has an ideology that is responsive to the aspirations of Rwandans. He needs to step away from that green international. So you'd have to yes. change the party's name. It, 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 would be, it would be very wise for him to do. Um, <laughs> now, That's now, now yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yes, and and I advise him because yeah. now we are becoming friends. You know, yeah. I I I wrote on, I wrote about him in the New Times, yeah. and he was not very happy about it. Yeah. In, in fact, he promised to sue me. He wrote me an email yeah. saying he was going to sue me and the New Times because yeah. of something I wrote about him. Yeah. And these these are people who are championing democratic rights, freedom yeah. of expression, and, and, and he wants to sue me. And he doesn't even have he doesn't have state power. Imagine if he has state power, he's going to he's going to do something worse but, to but me. But if you know? you're generalist, wait, you're wait, wait, doing wait, let, uh, these are people who preach things they don't believe. Let's no, stick, hmm? let's stick yeah. to the subject matter here. So, to respect mm, professional ethics. Yes, yes, yes. So yes. if you respect your professional ethics, yes. we will have no problem with. But if you are generalist who start abusing people yes. and giving calling them names, yes. I mean the, anyone, even in, in a democratic country, you'd have a problem when you're a generalist. So you have to respect your professional I, right. values. Um, That's what I can say. We'll leave that out of this conversation because it wasn't it wasn't part of the conversation. We've mentioned parliament here. And, and still sticking to the democracy model of Rwanda mm. when it comes to parliament, as opposed to other East African countries where parliamentarians are elected by constituents to represent their constituencies. 
unlike those countries here in Rwanda, you know, you go and the party is actually the one that has a list. And uh, depending on how the party performs, it gets a share of the 80 seats, you know, um, uh, based on the, 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 the percentages that they won in. Mm. How good or how bad is this particular system? Um, Lonzen, I'm going to start with you on that. Yeah, um, Especially when it comes to democracy. You know, uh, some people have argued that if you have these people going to be elected from the, demo the, the constituencies, then they will represent the needs. They have the touch of the people on the ground. Uh, that uh, system was conceived out of the peculiarities mm -hmm. that existed at the time. Yes. And those peculiarities have to do with constituency building in this country. It's history. The history of constituency building in this country has been ethnically based. Mm -hmm. So go, doing away with constituency uh, attachment of mm -hmm. MPs was by design to respond to a peculiarity that uh, come out of the post-genocide uh, situation mm -hmm. so that we don't return to, to that uh, uh, amalgamation, you know, the break, breaking down of, of, of people uh, uh, by, by those small constituency. Now, um, constituency building in this country uh, is very sensitive. Uh, if you, even if you step away from the MPs and but how people they, say it makes it more competitive. Yeah, that people go on the ground and sell their manifestos and then yes, they get elected. But but the, this the, this is a conversation about uh, about uh, uh, perceptions about how things work elsewhere. Mm -hmm. In Rwanda, a democratic system is built to serve the particular. Uh, peculiarities of that country and I told you that our democratic system is born out of the pe post genocide peculiarities yeah. uh, that were built in the uh, constitution in 2003 and then retained in the constitution 2015. Right. We have only four minutes. I want okay. us to really share them let, very let me, well. Let me, let me make a quick point to constituency building. Mm. In this country um, the, there are people who try to build constituencies uh, post-genocide, uh, ethnically based constituencies. There are some people who try to build constituency based on regionalism. They're from a certain region. And uh, every time that constituents have been built, they've been crushed. Why have they been crushed? Because they are counter to those peculiarities I just created. Right. Another, peculi another constituency... That's good enough. That's good enough. One is good enough. Let's bring in uh, Dr. Frank on this one, especially on the issue of uh, you know, representation, parliamentary representation, um, and, and the list... Uh, that you know uh, political parties have. So depending on how you perform, then you actually get your members of parliament yeah. based on that list. What's your thought on uh, that? Because as this is a constitutional concerned? issue. Yes. And uh, I, I, I believe in the constitution. Mm. So in the constitution, there says proportional representation. Yes. So we do believe in the proportional representation that uh, uh, we have to, uh, all our parties, uh, go to compete for votes. And those who get 5%, uh, they go to parliament. Uh, but of course we asked uh, in our petition that this number should be reduced to at least 4% because not even 4% would be sufficient for parties to go to parliament. We also had requested that uh, for uh, independent candidates, then the, 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 max could, the, the points could be reduced to at least 2% because we could not consider an independent candidate mm -hmm. as a political party. Mm -hmm. So we don't have a problem with uh, this constitutional uh, issue. So you have no issue with that. Mm -hmm. I want to bring in our viewers again uh, right here. We have Butera uh, who's asking, Dear Frank Avineza, if you want to have constituencies under Green Party, uh, um, uh, rondify your agenda. I think it's exactly. what... Yeah. Uh, he was saying that your agenda is is, is no. Not I think local. Uh, the issue of our agenda mm -hmm. it has been made clear. I think we uh, uh, outlined our uh, political program yes. about uh, uh, last month in March yes. when we had our uh, national congress. Yes, some issues in our political program they are more covering national issues. Soon we shall have a manifesto. But, but it wasn't the manifesto, covered. the party man, the, our candidate manifesto, we also put more in focus of the national issues. So I think uh, uh, no. what the people they say they are not seeing, maybe they will see it more in just, by the way, a few weeks to but come. But it's not in national because yeah. if you look at back, back for on, on, on the issue of the petition you filed and, 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 and on, the, on the term limits, on the lifting of the term limits, yeah. you know, if, if it was local or Rwandified, yeah. You would be on the side of those who voted. No, because we're also standing with the constitution. The constitution said that under no circumstances should a president serve more than two terms. Mm -hmm. So it was a constitution which said in Article 101. Mm -hmm. So we said the constitution should be respected. <laughs> a president should serve only two <laughs> terms. <laughs> there, there should not be any uh, uh, efforts to amend the constitution for a president to have a third term. Mm -hmm. So we were respecting the constitution. When they did not listen, we took it to the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. We had and a ruling okay. in the Supreme and Court. And so basically, uh, we were just respecting what the constitution was saying. 
and it is and not against, and not against the constitution yes. and that's why the supreme court had a chance to listen to our to our case okay. because we were respecting the constitution mm -hmm. yes maybe we did not get whatever we wanted but we got something at the end of that day because they respected the two terms limits to the constitution you know there was a movement <laughs> to change the constitution to have open terms like in zimbabwe but that was at least stopped All right. and then finally though there was an article which was included in which was not in our favor but at least most of the things we asked we got it so basically what is wrong with that that was democracy Dr. Havines, that was democracy yeah. yes. Do Dr. Havines, so those people wouldn't want to hear us they are misplaced <laughs> Dr. But, but Dr. Your, 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 your colleagues in terms of uh thought as far as democracy in rwanda is concerned don't really feel like there is open space in rwanda they say there's no and democracy. And but and you space seem to be shooting to, yourself to be on the getting food, it. saying no, that was democracy. Space is it worked. For. They had for me. No, we I mean, believe they had that, that yeah. space, yes. you, you have to fight for and it. Angry. You have to struggle for it. And I don't think that the RPF is going to give anything uh, to Dr. us. Dr. But we have to fight for whatever we need and we'll get it. Yeah. Dr. Aveneza yeah. mm. agrees that Rwanda has a democratic system mm -hmm. that is well-functioning mm -hmm. and is accountable and it is wonderful. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. he really should not be running for president to change anything. I think you should not now, say what I have not now, said. Second, you, you, no, you I have another point. I have another point. Let me have so another I point. I have another I'm point. Yeah. He's also I saying... I speak for myself. As a parting he, shot, very brief. Yeah, yeah, very quickly. Mm -hmm. yes. Dr. Abineza is saying that uh, uh, he wants to petition parliament to reduce the requirement from 5% mm -hmm. to, <laughs> to, to 4%. Mm -hmm. Yet, he thinks that his party is popular enough to run for president and win okay. the presidency. No, if he can't get 5%, where does he think he can it get the percentage? For the sake to, of our party, to, 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 uh, okay, no, we are, we are addressed thing. these issues. But, but, but now, the, yeah. the closing remark, yes. the closing Very point quickly. is this: yeah. yeah, this system, a political system, the the democracy Rwanda we have, it's organically grown, and it must retain its organic nature. Anything that is foreign matter, we must continue to fight. Okay. Now, it and it will continue to thrive as long as the political system remains accountable. Right. The more when it starts, we're going to be cut off of air. <laughs> we're going to be cut off, and that will really look bad. Although they ate into our time. Five okay. Uh, Dr. Frank, no, closing I, remarks. I think uh, Rwanda needs to have a more competitive, uh, democratic system, participatory democracy, whereby people can express their ideas freely, can vote for whoever they want to vote. And uh, we need to have, of course, to respect our fundamental values. Mm -hmm. So someone to say that you are threatened by other parties, that's wrong. We should be more tolerant to each other, <laughs> respect each other, because we are all Rwandans who all believe in having a better Rwanda. All right. Thank you. Fireworks, I'm telling you. Thank you so much for watching the program. <laughs> <laughs> They've eaten into our time. And also it's time for us to just pack and leave at this particular time. Thank you so much for being part of the program. So many tweets right there. Let's keep this conversation going. We'll keep talking. The hashtag is in focus RW. We'll see you again next time, same time and same place. But we're gonna leave you with a parting shot right about now. My name as always is Eugene and Nangue. Goodbye for now. Mm -hmm.